Section 8.4, Bond Polarity and Electronegativity. So, if you've got two electrons that you're sharing every time you have a bond, the only time that you're sharing them absolutely equally is if you have two identical atoms that are pulling on those electrons exactly the same. If you ever have anything that's not exactly the same atoms, then they are going to pull on those electrons unequally because one might have more protons in the nucleus and so it's pulling on those electrons or something. Something's going to be uneven about the two atoms that are in the bond and so you're going to have an unequal bond. So really there are three types of ways that you can share those electrons. You can either share them perfectly equally. So let's say I have two fluorine atoms and they're perfectly sharing them exactly the same. Okay, That would be one possible way of sharing an electron. The other way of sharing an electron is if I have um, an atom that's pulling a lot and an atom that's pulling a little bit and they're sharing an electron. Okay. Um, I wouldn't want to share the electron with the big greedy atom, okay, because he's going to unequally share it. It's going to be more towards him than me, okay? That would be like sharing food with someone who eats more than you. It's an unequal share. The other one would be is somewhere in the middle where I'm somewhat somewhat bigger on one side than the other, and so it's slightly an unequal share. So you've got three possibilities. You're sharing equally, okay? You're sharing not equally, and then this way is actually not sharing. It's, it's the same as stealing, okay? So if one is so much, one pulls so much more on the electrons than the other, it's not even considered sharing, it's considered stealing, okay? This would be an ionic bond. If you steal an electron, it's an ionic bond because one actually gets the electrons transferred to one side. It's not really shared as a bond of sharing electrons. It's transferred and then you become ions and then those ions stick together electrically. So you can either, if you're sharing electrons, you're either gonna share them equally or unequally and that's what we're talking about today. So electronegativity is very similar. It's related to ionization energy. So you remember if you have a very low ionization energy, that means it's easy to steal an electron from you. If you have a very high ionization energy, it requires a tremendous amount of energy to steal an electron. Okay, so if you have a very high electro, uh, ionization energy, you're not likely to steal something. Okay. Also, if you have uh, its electronegativity is also related to electron affinity. So if you have a high electron affinity, you're greedy for the electrons you have and are less likely to give them away. If you have a high ionization energy, it's too expensive for others to steal. So if you have a high ionization energy and a high electron, uh, high electron affinity, then you're likely to draw ele uh, electrons to yourself in a molecule. Okay, That's the most important part. Electronegativity is between two molecules. Which one's likely to share unequally the, ele the electrons? That's electronegativity. And you can see that it, it tends towards fluorine. The fluorine would have the highest electronegativity. So electronegativity have numbers, and they're unitless numbers, and every single element has a certain electronegativity, and they're both based upon ionization energy and electron affinity, and so fluorine is the highest. So if you subtract any two uh, any two of these with electronegativity, you'll see a difference, okay? So for instance, take electronegativity of fluorine with fluorine, okay? So you have a fluorine-fluorine bond. So four minus four is zero, okay? 
there it's not it's sharing perfectly equally all right that's a perfectly equal share so there's no one side has more electrons than the other it's not it's not unequal it's equal if you have something that's not the same let's say you have a fluorine hydrogen okay hydrogen is 2.1 fluorine is 4 4 minus 2.1 is 1.8 Okay, 1.8 is an unequal share. So 1.8 would be something like that. It's unequaling sharing. Okay, this is called a polar covalent. Covalent because it's sharing, polar because it's there's one side that has more negative than the other side. Okay, because that's what polar mean. This is nonpolar, meaning there's not one side they're equal, so it's non-polar covalent. Okay, so uh, it works something like anything less than 0.5 and a uh, difference, and it's going to be considered non-polar. So zero, of course, would be non-polar. Anything from 0.5 to 1.7 would be considered polar, and then anything over 1.7 difference would be ionic. So let's look at lithium and fluoride. Lithium and fluoride. Fluoride is 4, lithium is 1, 4 minus 1 is 3. That's more than 1.7. That's considered ionic. So it's actually a transfer of electrons, not really sharing. It's it's sharing completely like it's like you sharing your silverware with a thief. He's gonna come in and take it, and then you're never gonna have it again. That's sharing, I guess. So to review, nonpolar covalent bonds exist between nonmetals. These are all the things on the upper right of the periodic table. They share covalent bonds. Remember, if you have metals and nonmetals, they're, they're ionic. But if you want covalent bonds where they're sharing and they're sharing equally, then you have to have a difference, electronegativity difference, which you go back to that chart, different than 0.4. So very, very similar, like the same element or something really, really close would be nonpolar covalent. Anything from zero to negative four difference electronegativity. So this would be a nonpolar covalent bond. The region here of sharing is perfectly equal. It's an equal share. So polar covalent bonds are sharing unequally. And then the way that you quantify that or how much, like put a number to it, is um, you use a, you de determine a, dipole moment. And a dipole moment is the amount of charge that's separated. That's what Q is. The amount of charge separated times the distance that it's separated. So if you can take the bond length and then find out what the charges are between the, two, the half charges, then you can determine a number. And that's where they came up with the electronegativity number. So the number is 4 and 2.1 and you subtract it. So this is how you did it. And it's measured in in Debye's. So if you have an electronegativity difference between 0.5 and 1.7, then you have an unequal share and it's called a polar covalent bond. And the bigger one is, is pulling on the electrons more, so you're going to get a partial negative side to this, and then the one that's getting it ripped off is going to have a pop partial positive side. And that's what polar means. Polar means north pole, south pole. Like if it's polar, it's going to have one part that's positive, one part that's negative. So you can actually turn a molecule over and say, oh, this is the negative side, or this is the positive side. So here's a polar covalent bond. Okay, you can see the negative side is more red. Okay, this is more red, negative. And then the positive side is more blue. And that's delta positive. Okay, it's just sh un unequal sharing. If you think of chlorine, chlorine, um, chlorine is seventeen. It's got a, it's got seventeen protons, and hydrogen has one. So one proton is pulling on the electron, and seventeen is pulling on the electron. You see the difference. You're gonna that electron is going to be shared unequally over towards the chlorine. Then if you have something more than 1.8, it's total stealing. It's not, it's not actually 
it's not actually sharing at all. You're, you're transferring it, and then the connection is not sharing electrons as a bond, but actually an ion positive and an ion negative sticking together electrically. That's the difference. That's an ionic bond. So an ionic bond, it's completely red over here and completely blue over here, and one side is absolutely negative, like the chlorine, and one side's absolutely positive, like the sodium, and then you have a salt. So every single bond then could be checked separately. You could look at this bond and say, okay, what is the difference in electronegativity between the carbon and the chlorine? And say, oh, okay, that is a difference of 0.5, so that must be polar covalent. Or here's a difference between sodium and chloride, it's a difference of 2.1, ah, oh, that has to be ionic. Okay, so you can just number-wise check the electronegativity, separate them, subtract them, and then you should be able to determine what type of bond you got.